All right, what's going on? My name is Michael. You guys are watching IDB. And to celebrate the public release of the iOS 17 beta, I wanted to go ahead and show you some of my favorite features in iOS 17. Before we jump in, I wanna tell you how you can first actually get the beta on your iPhone if you don't have it right now. Open up Safari on your iPhone and go to beta.apple.com. From here, you can scroll down and click on the blue sign up icon. And then from there, you'll have to agree to a few terms and conditions, sign in with your Apple ID, and then you will be officially signed up for the public beta. Once you are signed up, you wanna open up settings and then go to general and then choose software update. From here, you wanna to go to the top and click where it says beta updates. And if you have successfully signed up for the public beta, you're gonna see a thing in here that says iOS 17 public beta. So if you click on this and then go back into settings, your phone is then going to pull the iOS 17 OTA software update. And then from here, you can install iOS 17 beta on your device. A few things that you do need to know before installing iOS 17 beta. Once you install the beta, it is a little bit difficult to go back to iOS 16. And I also do recommend that if you are updating to the beta to make sure to back up your iPhone in case you do wanna go back to iOS 16. But now if you have gotten this far and have iOS 17 installed on your iPhone, I now wanna show you some of my favorite features in iOS 17. The first one is we get some new wallpapers. So the first one is just the all new default iOS 17 wallpaper. I like this one a lot. I like how it's red and orange. I also like the purple and blue at the bottom. Apple always has these really nice colorful wallpapers for every year's iOS release. And this one with iOS 17 is pretty nice also. We also have a few new kaleidoscope wallpapers. These are inspired by the kaleidoscope Apple Watch face. And we also have a few new astronomy faces which show all of the planets. And you're also gonna notice that as you set any of these astronomy wallpapers as your wallpaper, when you swipe up to go to your home screen, it's going to have a really nice subtle animation where it zooms into the planet. And also in iOS 17, you're gonna notice on the lock screen, when you press and hold and then press on customize, there is an option for the lock screen to now choose the text thickness of the clock. So you can see we have the slider here. You can go all the way to super thin and also make it as thick as you want as well. Another one of my favorite features in iOS 17 is interactive widgets. Now, there aren't that many interactive widgets right now on iOS 17 that I'm using. The only ones that I use currently are music and reminders. So reminders is probably my most used one. I use this application literally every single day to remind myself of what I have to do that day, obviously. And I can check off my to-do list right from my home screen, which saves me a lot of time. So if you use reminders, this new home screen screen widget is definitely going to make you a lot more productive. We are going to have more interactive widgets as well once developers get on updating their applications. So you can expect to have a whole bunch of more interactive widgets once developers have updated all of their apps to support iOS 17. Another great feature is called Standby. I use this again every single day when my iPhone is on my nightstand. All you have to do is turn it on inside of settings. So open up settings, scroll down and click on standby. You have a few different options here to have it on all the time. If you have an iPhone 14 Pro, that's the only way to keep it on permanently because that's the only iPhone that supports an always on display. And if you have any other iPhone, you'll either have to bump the table or tap the screen of your iPhone in order to turn it on. So when you have your iPhone mounted on a MagSafe charging mount and it's in landscape mode, it's going to show you a few different clock styles. So you can have one that has widgets on it. You can also have a few different stylized ones as you can see here. And you can also choose to have any of your photos showing in standby mode as well. One more thing that's cool about standby mode is it's gonna use the ambient light sensor on your iPhone to detect if the room you're in is dark. And if it thinks it's nighttime or if it's a dark enough environment, it's gonna make the text on your iPhone screen red, which is a lot better for nighttime visibility. Another really great feature in iOS 17 is autocorrect. Now this is one of those backend changes that Apple made to the code in iOS 17 that's just gonna make your iPhone a lot easier to use every single day. So now you can finally text your friends, this is so ducking cool, if you know what I mean, and your iPhone, after you fix it one time, is going to learn that you actually meant to say another thing, and it's going to memorize the phrases that you use a lot better. So iOS 17 autocorrect is apparently going to make 
typing a lot faster. Apple said that they are using a transformer model for this autocorrect, and pretty much that is just Apple's way of saying they're using AI to make the keyboard a lot better. But for some reason, Apple doesn't like to use the word AI, so instead we just get a much better autocorrect experience on the iPhone. Another one of my favorite changes in iOS 17 is to messages. One of the first changes is when you are in a message thread, if you wanna to reply to a single message, you no longer have to press and hold on the bubble. Instead, you can simply swipe on the bubble to reply right in line. Another great feature is called check-in. So you know whenever you text your friends saying, let me know when you get home safely? Well, that feature is now built right into iOS 17. If you click on the newly redesigned apps icon, you'll see there's a new option called check-in. You can send a check-in request to anybody, and this is going to notify you when your friend or family member arrives home safely. And iOS 17 also has some really nice new stickers. So you can use any emoji that you want as a sticker, and you can also create your own stickers right from the iMessage application. And if you receive a lot of audio messages in iMessage, you are going to love iOS 17 because there are two changes for audio messages that make them a lot easier. The first one is your iPhone is now going to transcribe what was said in the audio message. So if you're in a situation where you can't listen to the message or you just don't feel like it, your iPhone can actually transcribe the spoken word in that message and it can actually tell you in plain text what was said in that audio message. And another great feature is if you start playing an audio message that's very long, you can now actually leave iMessage and start doing something else on your iPhone while that audio message continues to play in the background iOS 17 also supports a pretty cool new feature called contact posters. Now, when this feature was first announced by Apple, I was a little bit confused. I was under the impression that you had to go onto your iPhone and create a contact poster for each of your contacts. And as soon as I thought that, I'm like, okay, I'm never gonna use this feature. But actually, you create your contact poster and you choose what appears on your friend's phone when you call them. So this is pretty cool. So kind of similar to how you can set up your own iMessage photo, you can now have your own contact poster. So whenever you call someone, you're gonna decide what your friend's phone shows for your contact iOS 17 also supports a pretty cool feature for FaceTime. So if you have ever FaceTimed someone and you get that message saying that they're unavailable, you can now leave a video message for FaceTime. This is kind of neat if you wanted to share something with your friend or family member in the moment, such as a pet doing something cool or maybe a sporting event, you can now leave a message on that FaceTime call so you can show them what you wanted to originally show them when you placed the call. There's also a pretty cool new feature in iOS 17 called screen distance. Now I turn this on inside of screen time settings on my iPhone and after holding my iPhone pretty close to my face for about 15 to 20 minutes, I got an alert actually on my iPhone saying to move my phone further away from my eyes. So this is really good, you know, for those kids that hold their iPhone literally two centimeters away from their face, you can now set up your iPhone to notify you if you're holding it too close to your eyes. And iOS 17 now finally supports offline maps. Now, if you were someone who needed offline maps, you were probably using Google Maps anyway, but if you decided to use Apple Maps as your default, you can now download and save offline maps in the default mapping application, finally. And inside of Apple Music, we have a pretty nice redesign to the now playing screen. You're gonna notice that it now takes up the entire screen for the color of the album art. And we also have animated album art on the now playing screen. This animated album art was previously only reserved for the Apple Music page, but now whenever you have any song added to your library that supports animated artwork, it's now going to show right on the now playing screen, which is awesome. Another really awesome feature for iOS 17 is for the AirPods Pro second generation. If you have the newest pair of AirPods Pro, there are two new features that are coming, which is really going to be awesome for your day-to-day -day use. The first one is called conversation awareness. So the AirPods are going to be able to detect whenever you start talking to someone, and when they detect that you're in a conversation, they're automatically gonna lower the volume of whatever you're listening to to make the conversation a lot more natural. 
And there's also another mode for the AirPods with this update called adaptive audio. This is essentially going to transition between noise canceling and transparency mode. So if your AirPods think that you're talking to someone, for example, in conjunction with conversation awareness, it's going to turn on transparency mode for you. But if your AirPods are detecting a bunch of loud noises in your surroundings, this is when it may turn on noise canceling automatically for you. So if you are tired of transitioning in between noise canceling and transparency, this new adaptive mode for the AirPods is going to be amazing for you. So of course, there are a bunch of additional changes in iOS 17, but these ones are just my favorites. Now that the public beta is officially out and available to everybody, you can go and install iOS 17 beta on your iPhone and try it out for yourself and let us know in the comments what your favorite new feature is in iOS 17. With all that said, if you guys found this video informative, entertaining, or helpful, or anything, please leave us a like. My name is Michael with IDB. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.